Greetings, Go fans. We're going to look at another one of my Taijim Sixton games. And, you know, these are really valuable games because we're going to focus on the mistakes. And then there's two, uh, well, I think there's, for me, at least there's two really big mistakes to learn from. They're more conceptual. I think they're more able to be appreciated at any skill level because uh, the concepts are pretty generalized, although the shapes are obviously, you know, specific to this game. Uh, and then and then there's also the uh, AI who's going to find some key moves and, and really just awesome AI stuff in this game, too, that I didn't think about uh, that is totally worth showing to you guys. So stick around, check out these two sort of just gen very general mistakes that I make in this game, and then, you know, prepare to be amazed by some by some really cool AI ideas in terms of how to deal with uh, this, you know, the actual specific situations local to the board. Uh, I do have Katago running here. Katago is a relatively recent AI robot. Uh, this is the win percentage. Total spoiler alert. Um, I am playing white in this game, and this is this graph is from the viewpoint of black. So you can see that, uh, like most of my games, I take an early lead. <laughs> oh, man. There's a small child screaming. <laughs> it's mine. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that or not. <laughs> Hopefully he just goes away. That'd be so nice. All right, uh, we've got this graph here that shows I take an early lead, and then we're going to run into some mistakes, and I'm going to show them to you. And then, you know, there's still some confusion, there's still some opportunities, but basically we come out of this whole middle game sequence uh, with Black having a pretty defiant lead, and I actually make up a lot of ground in the end game. This purple graph here is actually the Katago point estimator, and so unlike uh, Elf and Lizzie, or Lila Zero rather, Katago can actually estimate the score. And so I think especially for Q players, but for anyone, um, you know, knowing what the score is, is always uh, a really valuable thing. So go get Katago and, you know, let's tell you what your, the score of the game is at any point pretty accurately. Um, anyway, you can see that I do I do play a pretty good end game and, and, and gradually whittle that point lead down to two and a half points. So this ends up being a, a two and a half point loss for me uh, against the six Don. Uh, but you know, we'll go, we'll, we'll talk about why, because again, it should have never really, you know, there's, there's just a couple key points where I could avoid all that. All right. Anyway, let's, let's run the robot while we're, we're playing here. The opening is pretty nice. It's symmetrical. I'm, uh, again, when I'm white, I tend to play very symmetrically to, um, according to my opponent's plans. So that's just very normal for me. And uh, here, I'm going to turn off the robot here, actually, just so we can step through this. Although, wait, wait, what's the... Uh, I'll hold up the controls here. I want to toggle the candidate moves. Got to go. Hello? Not the working? Oh, there we go. Uh, show, hide, no, not move over. Toggle, nope. Oh, come on, come back, open. We weren't done reading that. Toggle. <laughs> you have to hold it down, right. Toggle node color display? Is that what I want? Y toggle? Maybe Y? All right. Let's try it. Totally didn't work. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, I guess we'll just go with it. Um, so my opponent approached me. I approached him. Uh, he backs off. This is a good move. Uh, and I, I play this Tanuki, which it's not the robot's favorite, but it's totally in the ballpark. Um, I like these early game Tanukis quite a bit. Uh, and part, part of also just playing this one in particular uh, is just that there's still a lot of these really old school Taijin players who don't know this one. Uh, so they don't <laughs> know what to do with it. In this game, it didn't matter. Uh, this corner never became a thing. Like... And maybe that's because my opponent didn't know it. So maybe maybe I had to gain an advantage there just because uh, it is still somewhat new and you do find a lot of the older players just look at kind of skeptically and don't know what to do. All right, this move is pretty cool. Not on the robot's radar. It is a slight loss, um, but just saying, you know, I'm going to control the middle directly. I'm going to build the bottom and put pressure on you. Uh, Black is basically saying he wants me to take the left-hand side and in exchange for control or at least influence the rest of the board. So in here, the robot definitely wanted the double approach, you know, definitely the most profitable kind of variation. But, you know, this is a way to play. Uh, I back off, because he did a strange move here, I responded with a slightly more strange move as well. I played this large knight's move. 
Uh, and the reason for this is because uh, I I am of the mindset I just want to get out of here in Tanuki pretty quickly. Um, like like my opponent is saying, I want to control the rest of the board. Uh, is actually devaluing everything on the left. So if he's devaluing everything on the left, then I should devalue it too. So I'm quickly dodging. Um, and the robot's like, yeah, yeah, you shouldn't have done that because you should, this is now just a, a black corner. But if we do it this way, black will live something small like this. Uh, robot says play here. That's cool. Um, and again, white will take back control of this area with this wall here. So that'd be a cool sequence. But again, never happened. Uh, my opponent definitely had an objective. That's not the game. Uh, and again, plays this move. Again, Robot doesn't like this move. Ro the, but my opponent is just looking for, again, that center influence control. Like, that's that's the game he wants to play. And for the most part, I'll say that I, I recognize this and let him, right? It was like, okay, that's what you want. That's fine. I'm going to take just some pretty large territories while we're at it. All right, so here I approach here, not the robot's favorite move. Um, basically, again, <laughs> making black commit a little bit more over here, because this is now a little bit more attackable, and then just settling a group on the right is what the robot wants to do, and I think that's perfectly fine. No qualms there. Totally different way to play. I'm just playing a little bit faster. Um, after this fast corner, I, I kind of want to keep up this tempo. Uh, backs off. This is not the best move. Again, even now the robot's like, yeah, yeah, you want influence. Why are you backing off? Like, like at least be consistent. So now we've, we've played this move here and this move here for the central sort of Moyo influence fighting game. And you find Black just playing this very soft... I mean, it's a solid move, but it's soft for the rest of the strategy. So throughout this sequence, White gets a little bit of an advantage. Um, and instead of... of um, black just connecting solidly here, he descends. And this is the variation you want when you want to take a pretty strong outside, but it is a local loss. And so this is a relatively recent Joseki variation that um, we actually saw this variation in the, the one of the Lee Sedol AlphaGo games, that first series of five, um, which was cool. And so black has this outside influence, white has a corner, but there's Aji here in these two stones, and white gets Sente. So it's really, locally, it's it's a slightly better variation for white because there's just so much Aji left on the outside, which I am going to get to use very happily, actually. I settle this group over here. Uh, and this this sets, this is the, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the stabilization move that's going to set up the fight. Um, because, well, it's, it's just, this is just a sequence of events, right? This feels all very... Uh, Causal. Is that a word? Causal? Causation? Something. All right, kick. Um, now, often you'd see white just defend here and then try to counterattack the bottom. Um, but no, I have this Aji, so I'm going to play faster. I'm going to go all the way to... Whoops. Yep. Uh, after this kick, I'm going to go all the way to there. There we go. And black's going to come on top. Now, this black move, this is pretty slack. Uh, super strong. Again, black is sort of pig-headed, saying I'm going to mill this really big. And I'm going, you know what, that's great. I'm, I've got other fancier, faster things to do. And so that's when I connect here and run this group out. Uh, and you can see this black group is kind of behind enemy lines, although my group only has three liberties, so it's a fight. Has to push up. We play there. Uh, he jumps out, which is interesting. Um, the most violent move is this, but this doesn't work. Right, like this, this is the shape point, right? Poke at the bamboo. But just doesn't work. He can't get out. Um, I thought he might even try just giving up two stones and just taking, again, a big outside. Um, I thought it might go like that in the game. And truth be told, the robot says that's horrible for black. Um, but it seemed consistent with his style. So anyway, that didn't happen. Uh, so we played there. and encourage Oops, no, not the right move. There you go, encouraged me to fight. Um, this extension feels natural, but if he does this... Uh, there is this real bad Aji up here, like this white group can totally lean on this. Uh, in the game, I was looking at this move being the next follow-up, but the robot says jump out first, which is interesting. Um, yeah, maybe poke there. Something like this. Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow, look at this exchange. All right, so I wouldn't... 
let's, let's play there and just make this double bamboo and lean out. So it's still a fight, right? Black will sort of tame this, but black still has a stick and white still has a stick. White looks like, uh, you know, I'm out further. So should be still to my advantage, but who knows? So that's just a way. All right. Things to anticipate. But here's what happens. Black doesn't play this way. Instead, black defends this side. And again, it's like, eh, I'm not in love with it. Right now, you're you're just playing connecting moves, which means white gets to take an even bigger advantage in this stick-to-stick -stick fight. It's a stick fight. Uh, plays once. This peep is good. I take it immediately. And the robot thinks I should take this peep first. Um, the reason why this peep is good is it connects, it, it basically prevents any shenanigans right here. I don't actually don't have that many liberties, right? So, um... Let's say connect. Yeah, now now actually the robot's like this this connection is required. Let's say I defend that group. Um, and the robot says I can't really cut right now because I can still peep. Um, but the the moral of the story is let's say I don't I don't know about that peep. <laughs> oh now oh this is interesting. Robot wants to play there and then there, for Aji, what? Oh man. Oh man, what is this? Oh, uh, this crazy robotness. We're gonna give all that up to take another wall here. I don't understand. Okay. Um, that's crazy. Or what's this like? Give this up. <laughs> if you haven't taken the peep yet, don't bother taking it at all. All right. Anyway, uh, back to the game. So I take this peep right away. Black connects, and now because I have this connection here, I'm just sort of free to push this all day long. Black extends. I take this peep now. <coughs> now. <coughs> and you can see this black stick didn't even get out to be a stick. It started to become a stick and then started having to crawl this way. And now this game, unbeknownst to both me and my opponent, really is going to become about how and when black can harass this group. And maybe we both sort of knew it, but neither of us actually played it out until much later. So of these two mistakes that I'm making in this game, this is this is the, our handling of this group. This was a mutual mistake. Neither one of us got it right. Um, so it's kind of this one in the game in practice was a wash. But for my for my own learning purposes, right, that's still a mistake, right? I still don't want to make that mistake in future games. Robot's actually not in love with this move here. It says you're already out enough. Um, it's now time to come back and play this. Um, like, like, the damage has already been done, right? The black stick is already kind of behind um, white. And so white still has all these harassing moves later on. I just have to be solid and safe. But I push one more time. And this is this is where uh, that mistake I said about, about neither of us handled this group well. This is the key point. I know this is a key point, but I don't, for whatever reason, I don't think it's that big of a deal <laughs> in the game. Um, but it is. It really is. And so even the robot's like, play here. And just fair warning, the robot's going to be like, play here for the next, I don't know how many umpteen moves. It's it's a little embarrassing that that my opponent never scooped this out. Of course, one of the mistakes you can make is going after your opponent's base too early. Right? If you go after the base before you have them sealed in or before you're strong enough, you will pay. And so this is the type of move that's really risky. If white gets really strong here... Uh, and then conceal in black, then, oh man. So, I can totally understand my opponent not playing it, but just the care of this group on the right, this is... the, fir the fir in, in my quick review of the game, or not so quick review, th this, is, this is a place where I need to improve, right? The handling of this group over here. Because at the time, when I'm pushing, when I'm pushing this black group, I'm like, I'm, I'm totally flexible. Like, I can, I can get out, I can make eyes, like nothing bad is going to happen. Um, so now when black plays there, this is now when I come and make this space. And this move still works. I want to show you the sequence because here's, here's, if you're just looking at this white on the outside, it looks pretty safe. Like, I think every Q player would be like, oh yeah, that's totally like 10 points. It's not 10 points, but let me show you why. Uh, this move is really nice. And let's look at a couple options. First, let's do this one where we just cover on top. Black plays here. Now, white has a choice. White can say, you know what? I want a little bit stronger shape for my group. But now black has eye space. And all of a sudden, this black stick is really no longer a stick. It's more looking like a live group. 
So white wants to connect here. And if black connects here, then this is great for white. Like, this is kind of game over. Because now white has the strength. Black doesn't have the eyes. Black's still behind. Everything is going in white's favor. You can see the, the huge win percentage in favor of white. But black's not going to play there. Black's going to peep here first. And this is the problem. If white connects, now black connects. And you can see how there's not enough space here for real eyes. So this is, even though, even, you know, this is a situation where no one has any eyes. So it's a fight. If, if everyone is not safe, then everyone is safe. It's one of those things. So that's the sequence we're kind of looking out for. We have to be aware that we don't really have enough space over here. That's the key. So even after this move. So black turns here. Robot says, no, that was, that's, that's not good. <laughs> and right now we're kind of at one of the highest. Yeah, I think, I think that is the highest win percentage I achieve in this game. Either highest or second highest. Um, or white's up 66% to 33. So we have a two to one lead of our opponent. That's not small. But here's where I want to draw your attention. Again, even though black didn't play the correct move, white should play an extra move over here. It's just behind enemy lines enough where an extra move or two, especially if we can get black to respond, would do wonders in terms of making sure we have eye space. And so if we look at this one, uh, let's see what black jumps out. Yeah, and it's, it's like, yeah, black's just going to tanuki and just go after this. <laughs> Is there ever a moment where here we can play this now? Very good. Peep, connect, connect. Atari. Oh, and it's just saying give up or back off. That's interesting. And just not even, don't even try to make eyes over here, right? Actually make your eyes here. Hmm. Neat. So that limits Black's Moyo down here a little bit. It also does leave a little bit of, in terms of potential cutting points um, because, again, those are really important with the black wheat group. Okay, so something like that. That's what the robot really wants to do to secure this. Uh, you're just going to see this be an issue, right? Just white didn't play another move over here. And so the robot's very nervous. All right, black turn says no good. I hane because, again, this is... <laughs> Like, I, my, my group is still weak. I still want the stick kind of behind me. This feels very natural. Oh, the robot says no good. <laughs> it's no good. <laughs> like, this one extra stone has just given Black a lot more momentum against this group. Uh, Black takes the Hane. Or it's like, that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> and then here. Um, I looked at this double Hane in game, but I, yeah, I was really scared of this one. I didn't actually review this with the robot. Because what does White do now? <laughs> Like, you made this cut, like, I made this cut, I could have made this cut, and this cut looks great to fight and make something here, but now all of a sudden this group is way behind. So I have to spend moves to get this group out, and black has a ladder, and it's like, where's my tempo? Like, I just, I just give up a stone and a ladder. Eh, robot says white's still winning. Okay. Here. So I just play the extension. Black crawls as well. Again, look at this key point. This group, you know, this is this is reading, right? This is recognizing that, oh, there was a weak point here. Is white safe? And the short answer is not really. <laughs> and even if is white safe, black's going to turn this into nothing and turn this, this is about 15 points right, here, right in here. Um, all those 15 points are going to turn into blacks. Uh, but I play here, and this this move visually looks awesome, right? Like, it's like, look, Black has this group that's undercut. It's facing my weak group's wall. Man, I need to make sure this group does not ever feel secure. And so this is feels supernatural. Not supernatural as in ghosts, but it's natural, naturally natural. And, uh, yep, and, and you can see the robot, it doesn't have any good moves over here, right? So this move is very natural. Um, of course, the robot actually likes leaning on top of this. I assume this is the follow-up. It still wants that. It's hard to know when it when it when you don't play the moves it wants you to play. The robot doesn't investigate the other moves. I assume this is the follow-up. Something like this. Yeah. Something like this. And so white gets a little bit more strength. Still wants this move. Locally, it looks like we're up here. Honey? Oh man. Uh, white, white feels a little bit like it's collapsing. 
Like I think I think black's gonna get around on both sides and we're just gonna have to live small. And that's actually not a bad result, but we have to make sure we profit somewhere else. All right, I, I just really like this move. I think I there's not a world where this move feels bad. <laughs> I'm a little bit sad the robot doesn't like it as much. Of course, the robot's looking at this, and that's that's what the robot's factoring into all its calculations here. All right, black comes on top, which, which is a choice. Like, it's one way to deal with this. Um, you're undercut, so try to get out and continue the attack. And here, yeah, I looked at... I mainly looked at these two. I didn't really think about this wedge very much. Um, exactly, because black has countermeasures like this. It doesn't quite feel right, right? It looks like it feels like Black has the momentum as getting out and attacking the stick at the same time. But I have this stone over here, and this stone over here is going to get me into trouble later on for this second mistake that I'm referring to because I kind of think about the stone wrong in terms of how to use it. Okay, Black attach. I just back off. I decide I want I want a simple. Still, this is the biggest move. Black doesn't find it yet, and then here in the game, I looked at this. And it turned, and after I looked at it with the robot, I was like, oh yeah, I should just play this one. This one leaves a lot of problems though, right? You have this wedge and this cut, namely. And so these reads can be harder. It's because they leave so many weaknesses. And so in the end, I ended up playing this one. I was like, this one's the simple one. I can totally deal with this one and be happy and be, and, <laughs> and go about my day. At this point in the game, it still feels like I'm winning, right? In part because I'm not, in during the actual play of the game, I'm not worried about this group. This group looks fine enough. Um, so if I can just profit up here and continue this sort of light attack and use it to stabilize this group, it looks like Black's only going to have one territory. And that one territory might be really big, but having only one territory is usually not enough to win the game. Um, Black descends, and this is interesting. Actually, it's just push and cut right now. And actually, yeah, yeah, probably play that one. Ooh, exchange... What a big exchange. Wow. Oh, exchange the, all of these. Oh, man. No, we're not giving this up? Are you kidding? Oh, it's a ladder. He has to take, connect, and fix. Look at that white thickness. Wow. All right. Definitely didn't think of that. <laughs> That's the robot's really good at, right? Like, finding these exchanges that are hard uh, to evaluate as a human. It's, it's, not, it's not so much the reading. Like, you can read out some of these sequences. They're, they tend to be very forced. But it's just the imaginative ability to, to evaluate what that's worth. So that's, that's pretty cool. All right. Let's give up that. Um, again, I'm a human... I, f I feel like I'm attacking this quasi-stick. I still have it undercut. I still have a peep here. Um, it looks like I can get it down to one eye whenever I need to. So it's a little bit unnatural. So I extend here. Just again, trying to stabilize this group while putting some distant pressure on the stick. on or Not the stick group, but the, the top group. Black follows. And here, yeah, I take a moment. Robot says, oh yeah, just extend. Continue doing what you're doing. This is a little bit scary, though, right? For Black to come in and just say, nope, I'm going to take 60 points here. I think it's 60. Two, three, four, five, six. So it's six line, six, seven line, really. Depend well, here, I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine at about like six and a half. So that's, yeah, that's right at 60 points there. Maybe another 10 in the corner. So Black is looking at a pretty clean 70 points, maybe five there, 75. Getting to 75 in, in a go game is is a lot of points. Like that's I know that happens in Q games all the time because you because Q players tend to make these huge swaths of Moyo territories, but human games that's not so not human Don level games that's not so prevalent. Anyway, I Tanuki here to poke at this. Instead of poking directly, I just make shape, and I'm like, okay, this move will help me stabilize the group. Uh, I can continue the attack, um, and and the robot it was one of the candidates, but definitely didn't like it. Um, Black's going to cut here. And now, so by, by giving up this Aji, Black is, Black is 
giving up these two stones, right? I have a stone here. This is what I meant earlier when I was saying, I have the stone here. It's just me figuring out how to use it. Um, and it's actually that having a stone here is one of the main reasons why I didn't play this way. Right? Because now this, this I'm not using this stone, right? Black still has free stuff. Um, that black will uh, make use of, right? Or, um, you know, if black tanukis, right? I can't push cut here, right? Black just captures. And so black has a free Atari and fixes this cut in Sente. And so that's why I don't play this normal descend here. Um, I want a better result. I have stones here. I want to use them, which is why I run out here. And now I can still push cut. But... Uh, black fixes, and that, and even that, even though it, in the end it exchanged these two stones, this is a good exchange for me. Uh, <clears throat> and the reason is because if I go back to here, black has this cut problem. But, but no, <laughs> let's give white a move. <laughs> but black has this move that kind of fixes it. You guys see this? Um, especially if black can find a combination, maybe there or there. You know, if white push cuts uh, here, <laughs> there now we're using this stone. We have this driving Tasuji to get out, and then basically capture the whole thing. And so, because black has this here, like we both have peeps, like in this situation, both players have peeps, and they both act defensively, right? We're peeping for defensive plays, right? To help our own shape. Uh, I feel like it's really important to peep first, <laughs> right? Because that limits my opponent's... If my opponent has to respond here, then when my... Oops. Then when he wants to fix here, this is redundant, right? He's already fixed, right? He can't fix this twice. Or he can, but it's a bad idea. Anyway, I'm, I'm not sure if I explained that inefficiency very well, but... Usually when both players have a peep available, if, if, if the cut isn't going to be a direct working move because of your opponent's peep, then you need to peep. Although well, apparently not here. <laughs> Robot just says cut. So, all right. Anyway, so I peep, plays this exchange, and then fixes, and then this, this move. All right, so we're talking about mistakes that Nick made during the game. It's totally misunderstanding the situation over here. And so we already talked about this one. This one, the robot's still like, yeah, yeah, you're dumb. Go play over there. Anyone, please, Bueller, go do the right-hand side. Because um, both me and my opponent are looking like, yeah, this looks pretty solid. But it needs to be harassed, like, immediately. Or or stabilized. And even, even if white stabilizes it with this kind of move, like, black harasses it with the next. And if black, or sorry, if white does something like this, Again, black still just harasses it with this one. Like, it's such a big sequence. It's just off of our radars, like me and my opponents. All right, so why is this a bad move? Notice it's not even a candidate. And that's that's kind of how telling it is, right? If I play here, 22% loss. Like, it looks like a solid move, right? It looks like, oh, I'm going to take a huge corner, capture two stones, and I'm keeping the pressure on the black top group. So what's wrong? <laughs> well, number one... Black isn't really it doesn't really have a hope to do anything with these two stones, right? Even if black saves them. Uh, let's see, this is the candidate move to save them. Um, what's what's the next move here? Like, like black can save them for one eye. White still gets connected. Um, and then white can take Sente to help the group or take points or invade, do something. So, like, these two stones are maybe worth an eye. Like, in other words, two points. These two stones are worth what their value worth is in two points. It doesn't have a lot of large, long-term strategic implications as far as the bottom of this board. Uh, of course, this one does. <laughs> but, okay. Go back. So, so when I run this out... Um, black takes the initiative here to hunt it, which again puts pressure on my stick group and builds the bottom just a little bit bigger. Uh, you can see that at the moment it looks like um, how this works is whoever's move it is, if it's negative, 
it'll show how many points you're losing, and if it's positive, it'll show how many points you're winning by. I remember saying at this point in the game, White's behind by four points. After Comey. All right. <clears throat> so I just Hane here. Black double Hanes. It's fine. Although, actually, it's really, really close, like two point game. I tell, even though white black has the ladder, this is good Aji. Um, oh, the robot just says, no, save the Aji for later. Either one, it's very similar. Okay. All right, and then here we're we're losing, right? Like like this is now decidedly flipped into black's favor, um, and it really stems from this move, just over evaluating how much this is worth. Um, because even then, even even though I took this, Black still has free stuff, right? There's still free Atari. Um, there's still moves like here. And the, even though this is quote unquote a, a bad move, um, it's really hard for White to do things, right? Black can just keep pushing out. Um, there's now a Hane here, uh, and White can't cut. So it's 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 the question that these two stones are not worth the Aji. Right, it's not it's not worth capturing them because Black still gets too many free stuff moves to help out this group or reduce this or attack me here, and so it's just not worth it. And so instead of trying to capture them, it'd be just more worth my time just to stabilize the center, right, and make sure Black doesn't get a whole bunch more free stuff. So totally misevaluated the situation, right? Thought these two stones were way better than they are. They're not and tried to kill him. And then here, this is a little bit of a personal downfall. Nothing, nothing like super, you know, dramatic happens. Like, it still feels like it's fine, like it's totally playable. Um, but this bottom is real big. <laughs> like real, real big. And again, I don't play, even if I play this move, right? What says White's still winning. <laughs> you know, maybe we're not as winning as much before. You know, it's like a <laughs> less than one point game but we're winning I come up with this move which the robot definitely doesn't like <laughs> but what I'm trying to do uh, you know this this shape over here is kind of bad <laughs> I'm trying not to injure myself while at the same time reducing this moyo and keeping an eye on this stone and these two stones right in my in my mind the action is right in here um, for this game, because we have these two cutting stones, this one cutting stone, and some sort of big fight. If the two black stones get captured, then this group never can be harassed. Furthermore, I'm going to take a really large left, and it's going to slightly reduce black's bottom. Like, this is this is the hot area of the board. The robot, of course, says no. It's still all about this group. Remember this thing? It just doesn't go away. The gift that keeps on giving. Just black and harass it to the point where you know, White can't make enough points there to win the game, or just feels under pressure to have to give up Sente, maybe a couple times. All right, I mean, Black responds here, which is eh, arguably the best one of the, the three local responses. Um, and then I play a really inventive move <clears throat> that I thought was good. I played here. And this is, this is sort of the point of <coughs> my game, or my move here. The robot totally doesn't see it that way. <laughs> the robot's like, no, 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 whatever you're doing, it's totally wrong. So here, let's go back. Let's do something. Let's. I'm just going to make that exchange, and here we'll also make this exchange. All oh, these exchanges are really good for white, though. So here, if we give black, all right, that's kind. Yeah, that puts it right at fifty-fifty. It makes it so the robot doesn't care about this anymore. Let's now look and see what the robot does. So the robot wants to play this way. Interesting. And then play this way. Oh, man. And then this way, give up the corner? And how about this? Now come back to the corner? This is very confusing. And wedge. And then what? And then fix. So white keeps the corner. This is a bunch of hand fighting, just for the white keeps the corner. Not, that's a really fancy way to keep the corner. 50-50 game. Like, it was it was literally, we just drew lines in the sand. That's funny. Hmm. So, it still likes this one. It doesn't, alright, so we play this, 
still doesn't like my move here. So the point of my move here, right, is to threaten to come in and just destroy the Moyo while also cutting this off, right? Because if Black now tries to do this, I guess he totally can, actually. Hmm. This is not at all clear what happens. We play there. Yeah, this net is not a real net. So Black's, Black's going to kill me, but I'm going to be able to seal this in. Oh, no, I'm not. There's a weird, um... Not weird, but legitimate cut here. I die there if I play that out that way. Okay. All right, so my move turns out is bad. <laughs> this didn't read it well enough. Um, yeah, because of this move. Or I guess because of a lot of moves, but... Even though it's like, this is this actually isn't as big as just destroying the corner right now. I'm just getting strength and destroying the corner. Yeah, whoops. Like that. That's the robot wants to do. Like, this doesn't care. All right. Well, I was creative. Like, points for being creative. And this move actually did... Uh, is this the game? No. Where's game? Well, let's go back to game. What am I missing? No, this is... Okay. Oh, because I put all these stones to the right. There we go. Not looking... There we go. So attach, come back, there. This doesn't work for the aforementioned reasons of this Atari and Clamp kind of stuff. My opponent plays this way. My robot's like, mm, no. It's still good enough, right? Black is still winning. But this actually kind of simplifies this left-hand side of the board. Um, so in the end, I ended up actually making this wall here and cutting these two stones off from everything and getting actually a pretty large potential here on the left. Not as big as the black bottom, but I also have this corner and I still have a little bit at the top and I have a little bit on the right, so this feels playable. <coughs> However, the robot says black is up by 15. <laughs> yes, because black should destroy the corner. All right, so in the corner, um, I just played the simple one, which is not good. Um, actually, it's, it's probably second best, maybe. <laughs> but Robot says you need to make something more mischievous here in order to get any sort of a good result. And so White keeps the corner here, but realistically... Oh, that's neat. This wedge. And just back out. Okay. I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay. Interesting, Haji. Anyway, um, White keeps a very small corner and then has to come back and deal with this, although that's not the only line, of course. I didn't quite see this variation working out, which is why I just descended here. and said, if you want the corner, you have to take it, but you're going to spend a sente move, and I'm still going to get some Aji out of it. Aji out of it. Uh, my opponent refuses, right? So, if, if again, if he took this, yep, I'm going to play there. And this left-hand side, you can see how big it is. Truly, truly pretty epic. Almost as epic as Black's bottom, right? Like, we have two huge epic Moyos. Uh, again, Black's is still bigger. You can see it's about almost 11 points bigger. But, still a game. Anyway, so Black played here. I defended just these two stones. There's just a lot of Aji here. Um, but, I can deal with it. So, again, bigger move to again, defend that corner. Apparently, name of the game. Um, Black is trying to ask for more. Just, just reduce this. And he totally can. Again, I get attached to these two stones way too much. Right? Still attached to them. Here, play this one to capture. And then my opponent, we, we keep playing this area... Like, he just keeps coming in. This was actually a nice sequence room. I didn't see this co here. Um, it's it's going to happen later. Um, but actually, actually, yeah, in the game, I thought this was a huge mistake. Yeah, and it is. But um, in the game, I was like, ah, oh, I, was, I was pretty sad to this point. Because even though I got to keep the corner, my left is destroyed. It looks like I have... I don't know. It, like, like to my eye, it looks like I'm 10 points down. Um, of course, the robot says I'm like 20 points down. Maybe, probably because of this move. 
So uh, anyway, after here, it's pretty happy. Like like black like effectively that's a twelve point loss. But this is this is a really nice moment in the game um, because this is where the AI magic finds a sequence, and I totally don't. <laughs> The AI is really focused on this cut right here and trying to make it work. And for me, it looks bad, right? It looks like, oh, this is a bad exchange. Now I have a cut exposed and, you know, I have no hope of, of getting any points here ever. Or if black wants to be defensive about it, black can play here and now can come back and capture these two stones whenever. But that's not the right way how to use this cut. The right way to use this cut is to start here. And this is the move I don't find. Um, as you guys may or may not know, right? Like, let's say let's say black connects here, does something to defend this side. Um, oops, actually, let's use the robot guidance, but yeah. White has this move. And we're going to play this way. And black can kill this, but check this out. Now, uh, black is kind of actually behind enemy lines. And even if black can cut here, oh man, take that Atari. <laughs> yeah, so white is safe on the left. White has this here. Even though the, the black group is totally safe here, there is this cut for Aji. And so white is going to very calmly try to build a base or get strong over here, which is then going to threaten this cut. And if black has to defend this cut, uh, oops, white is going to keep taking free stuff until white has eyes. And, oh man, more free stuff. Even to the point where it's like, Tanuki? How do you continue? I guess here? This one? This one? I'm not exactly sure if there are two eyes here or not yet. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Let's play here. Black says no, you only have one eye. Hmm. This one? Oh, don't push cut. Just come under. Wow, white's trying real hard here. Find something. Oh my gosh, and we're out. There it is. Oh no, there's a cut here now. So we're not, this all dies. Oh no, what? It doesn't die? What is this black magic? That's good timing for the Hane. Oh no, we're gonna co? No. Yes, yes, we're going to co. Oh my god. What is this? Oh, goddamn robots and their. <laughs> Insanity. Like, and it's even predicting white's gonna win this. White's gonna win this co, or at least White's gonna get some sort of compensation for it. Here, let's let's just keep playing it out. I don't, I don't, I really don't know how this is gonna go. You guys can see the problem now, right? White has a group and Black has a group, and it depends all on this co. And it's it's not clear. <laughs> White gets another threat. Oh, it says finish the co. Atari, take... Oh, don't Atari here? Why not Atari there? This Atari here seems pretty natural. All right, let's do what the robot says. Oh, wow. Still says better to connect there. Oh, man. All right, so we're going to die here, but are we going to kill this? We're going to ask some questions first. Yes, Black says die. And this... Oh man, I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's give it a second here to think a little bit longer. It says this way, and then peep here. Oh man, it can connect. Oh, I can't actually disconnect. Not enough liberties. Wow. So wow. You can look at this graph. This is just. Went off the deep end. Crazy. Oh, wow. 
All right, let's... So, so anyway, basically I would exchange a territory that I'd already ceded to black to kill the end of this tail here. Uh, that's pretty incredible. I don't think I would be able to fa find all those moves in the game, of course, but neither would my opponent, so who knows. The, the, the AI magic that I think I need to try, or at least I need to see, <clears throat> right, is still this move. And so here, let's let's go back to this. This is the move I don't see in the game. I just play this one like a, a Q player. I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> Very Q move, right? Um, but this is the one. All right. So in the game, robot says play here. Yeah. So now this now we can make use of this cut. In fact, the robot's like even like you know I I don't even want to try to get extra benefit from this. I just need to settle this like right now as soon as possible. And then white just dodges away, like, hey, I'm just going to go live over here. How is this going to go? Uh, back off. Oh, and then come here. Okay. And then dodge there. Oh, man. This is almost looking like a live shape. White just needs to block somewhere. So black must throw in immediately. Oh, man. Take a peep. Cut it off. Cover. Oh, and connect. We're going after this one. Wow. All right. White has one eye. And this cut. What? Oh, my God. It says white should... Oh, okay. Make that exchange first. Wow. What an exchange. We just cut off these bottom two stones. That's awesome. Oh, and look at this shape. Look at that nice shape. All right, don't play here because of this. <laughs> Check that out. Oh, man. And now it says black should come do this. Yeah, and especially because black got this extra move here. So, uh, I mean, it looks like... It, actually, after this move, it looks like we might die. <laughs> over here. So this is just a really big exchange. Black's going to take the entire right. We're going to be able to connect up at the bottom. Wow. All right. These robots, man. These robots are geniuses. Scary. Scary stuff. All right. So, so that specific variation aside, um, <clears throat> my flaw in this game, right, is I just wrote this cut off. I was, I was like, this, this cut, I can't do anything with it. This is not good. Because I just looked at this one. That's a bad exchange. I'm gonna get punished on the outside, but it's this, it's this, it's the follow-up move here. And you guys, I think you guys, most people who watch the these videos to this point, you know, are strong enough to see this one-two punch here, where, you know, this group is behind the enemy lines. That's why this, you're, this is what this cut is really doing, right? It's trying to cut off this whole thing, not just connect back or cut off one stone. It's um, looking at this move, which is why, which is why the corner was so big early on, right? Like if you look at this when Black Tanukied here. And black, uh, what did black do? Black played this one, right? It's why this move was so much bigger. Yeah, way bigger than doing anything over here. Not bigger than the right-hand side, maybe, but now, now this group is not secure. And so anyway, uh, I'll, I'll fast forward to the end of the game here so you can see how it ends, because again, I do pick up some points at the end, and it ends up being a two-and-a-half-point game. Robo says three, but that's before the, the half point. Uh, oh, there's a kata estimate, right? Ah, look at that. Shows you all the nice territory filled in. So, and again, that bottom is huge, but if you look at my top left, bottom left, it's almost the same size. Like, like maybe plus a couple comies. <laughs> Probably three comies. <laughs> but still, it's, it's not, it's not, that out of the question. Like, these are still big territories. Uh, so, anyway, that was another six-song game. I think, you know, for me, again, just recognizing this right-hand group. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess I should show you the right-hand group, because eventually we do play there. Let me turn off Kata Estimate. Makes the board look a little nicer. When do we get to play this out, actually? 
Oh yeah, so after this exchange is now when I come back and defend this. And it's fine. He pushes here, which is weird, and then just defends there, which is correct. Um, and then, actually, at some point, I also get this Hane, and I think during a co-fight. And so, and so I'm, 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 I'm totally safe, you know, after these moves, but um, it's just not big enough. Like, he can reduce the group still. Oh, yeah, there's this weird co that went... It was kind of sad for me. But it <laughs> over the course of the co, I was able to grind out a few more points, but I just didn't want to fight a co there. All right, so anyway, mistakes. Yeah, tending your groups... Look at your weak groups. You have to find the key points, know how badly they're going to be harassed, and see if you can, you know, make a preparatory move to prevent that from happening. In this case, it was really big for a really long time, and neither of us played it. Like, really big deal uh, at, at, you know, the six on level. Second, the... Uh, <laughs> going after these two stones. Totally not worth it, right? These two stones, like... like they can provide my opponent an eye, <laughs> but they leave a bunch of Aji for either player, right? It's like one of those things that if you want it, whoever wants it has to tend it. You know, it's it's like this, you know, I'm thinking of like some sort of little crappy piece of land garden that is real hard to till, real hard to plant. Um, so nobody wants it. Uh, so if you're the person who takes it over, you know, so maybe squatters rice or something, you're, you're going to be working real hard um, compared to if you just, you know, I don't know, used your own backyard or something, right? Like, it's, it's just something that no one really wants. This is not valuable because of that work that's involved in keeping it later on. And that's hard to identify. Like, those types of groups are really hard to, to be able to tell. Um, and then lastly, I think just not seeing the sequence, you know, I'm, I'm putting this like the AI genius level stuff, but, you know, I could, I could find a move here. I could, I could, like, I knew I was behind, uh, I knew I needed to play a little bit riskier. I should be looking at moves like this rather than these little, these little stupid, you know, end end game kicks, right? Like here, like I need to find a better move than that. Um, it's just not recognizing this cut actually is valuable <laughs> uh, in terms of attacking something. So there you go. There's my there's my latest game I played this morning. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, I understand that, you know, it's probably a lot of these moves or sequences are probably, I'm probably going a little bit fast through a lot of them for many of you, and you guys probably have more basic questions. Uh, I think, I think maybe, um, you know, maybe the next, maybe not the next video, but maybe two videos from now, I'll, I'll try to do a little more of a basics kind of thing. I know with my Go class during the before times, right before the COVID quarantining, um, I had a lot of more beginner and higher uh, double-digit cues in it, like 15 cues. So my my regular lectures had actually started catering to a more basic level. Uh, so I don't know. These have just been sort of fun for me just to go and do some more slightly higher level reviews. And so you know, I hope there's something for everyone. Is all I'm trying to say. All right, happy going. Go play some go. Uh, actually, the weather's starting to look really nice outside now. Uh, just it's just a little before noon, so I think I'm gonna go outside and enjoy the day. So, thanks for watching.